Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the <coughs> February meeting, a uh, special budget meeting of Pendle Borough Council. Uh, we move straight into the agenda. Just a reminder, just a reminder that this meeting is being live streamed on YouTube. And um, I'm sure you'll be aware of that. Uh, are there any apologies from absence? Can I give an apology from Councillor Mohammed Hanif? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Councillor Yanti. Thank you. Uh, yeah, Mr. Mayor, yeah, Mr. Mayor, apologies from Councillor Christian Wakeford, Councillor Foxley, Paul Foxley, that is, Mr. Salvador Shad, Councillor Petty, and Councillor Nathan. Thank you very much, Mr. Again, a reminder of declaration of interest that members are reminded of the legal requirement concerning the declaration of interest. Member must declare a disposable pecuniary interest which he or she has in any item on the agenda. The member with a disposable pecuniary interest in any item may not participate in any of the discussion of the member at the meeting and must not participate in any vote taken on the matter at the meeting. Are there any disposable pecuniary interests? No? Thank you. Again, a reminder that uh, items relating to the budget will be recorded votes. Uh, six, seven and eight on the agenda for, for reference. And item four, in accordance with normal practice, the council is invited to suspend standing order 14.3 to allow group leaders to speak on items six and seven for longer than five minutes if they deem that is necessary. Can we have a general show of hands that council agrees to that suspension? Thank you. Item 5. <coughs> then the robustness of the budget estimates for 2021 and the adequacy of reserves. Councillor Rick. That would be a recommendation for Mr. Mayor. General Secretary. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you very much. So we have a proposal in the second. All those in favour of accepting and noting the report. From the Chief Executive on budget estimates, please show in the usual manner. Thank you very much indeed. We can move then on to item 6, um, which is part of the recording vote system and is customary. Uh, Councillor Rickler, would you like to read on the budget issues? Thank you very much, Mr. Mayor. Uh, this evening it's my responsibility as leader of this council to deliver the budget speak for the next financial year. You will all be thankful that I intend to be brief. Not least because I am pleased to say for the first time in almost a decade, our budget will not include any further frontline spending reductions. It seems to me that Pendle is continually changing from one year to the next, and this year has been no different. Following the results of the last local elections, our shared administration of the Council, with the Liberal Democrats, has once again come together to provide the bold leadership necessary to drive forward some of the Council's key policy initiatives despite the financial challenges we've continued to face. As well as the leadership we provide, the Council could not operate as effectively as it does without the staff that work here, and the partners that we work with as well. I would first of all, Mr Mayor, therefore like to pay tribute to the hard work and dedication of all the Council staff, and those of our partners like Liberator and the Pendle Leisure Trust, who strive to provide the services that the people of Pendle want and deserve. As you all know, developing the budget is not an easy task, and given the scale of the funding reductions we face from the Conservative Government, we've always believed that we should work together to find the best way of dealing with the budget deficit, whilst ensuring that the services we provide to the residents of Pendle remain great of value. That's why I'm pleased that as one of our first acts as a shared administration, we reinstated the old party budget working group as a way of collectively developing the budget. 
And I'm grateful to both political groups, especially the Conservative group, for engaging in the budget process uh, this year. From the first meeting to the last, we haven't always agreed across the board, or even in our own group for that matter. But at all times we've debated, discussed and deliberated to find a way forward in the best interest of the residents of all parts of Pendle. I'm once again grateful to both the other political groups in engaging the process. Mr Mayor, after almost 10 years of cuts, of relentless reductions in funding and of shrinking services, there appears to be some respite next year, with a very slight increase in funding. I will say more about the one-year financial settlement for 2021 later. For now, I want to briefly talk about the prospects of places like Pendle under this new government. I hear much talk about levelling up, and if my understanding of that is right, I agree that there needs to be much levelling up, much more investment in left behind areas like Pendle. Of course, there's a need to turn the rhetoric into reality, words into action, and sound bites into spending, so that the hard working <coughs> residents of Pendle can feel the benefits in their daily lives, for example, with better wages if they're working, better support if they can't, better transport if they're travelling, better environments if they're not, better homes are affordable to live in, and better health if they're homeless. The forthcoming national budget in a few weeks provides the first opportunity for this government to put its money where its mouth is. For example, as a council, we've talked long and hard about the restatement of the Cold Skipton Railway Line, and with all the talk about reversing the beaching cuts by restoring local ways, what better example could there be of this government's commitment to Pendle's economic conditions by providing us the funds to deliver this project? And with a comprehensive spending review planned for autumn 2020, the much awaited fair funding review and changes to the business rate retention system to be implemented in April 2021, there's another opportunity for the government to level up with the resources for a council like ours so that we can continue to serve the services that our residents deserve and ask for. In the meantime, we have no illusion to colleagues that if we continue to see reductions in our core grant funding, combined with the reliance on local raised funding, my view is that this will have a significant impact on our ability to continue to provide the services that we do now. We all need to be prepared to take difficult decisions. But these are matters to consider in the future. And I'd, like, I'd now like to focus on the current year's budget and activity. I've said earlier that these times are difficult for the Council, and difficult financial times have never been more important for this Council to manage its money effectively. In January, as a joint administration, we reported that savings of £175,000 had been made as part of our revised budget for 2019-20. And I'm pleased to say that this evening, as an update, that our continued efforts to reduce the cost of our services are expected to deliver savings of around £210,000 by the end of this financial year. Once again, once again that is a very profitable income outcome, and is, in my view, reflective of the sound financial discipline which we've come to expect. Councillors, it's been a very busy year under my leadership of the shared administration, and I'd like to take a moment to reflect on some of what we've achieved. In doing so, I will provide an update on some of the Creek projects in the 30-point plan for Pendle, which we set out at the beginning of the year. The delivery of the extension to Longshore Industrial Estate has long been an aspiration of this council, and I'm pleased to report that everything necessary is in place to deliver phase one. Just to remind you, this is expected to provide the space to create around 500 jobs and more than 100,000 square feet of industrial space to help our growing business base. And talking of big strategic projects, there's nothing been as much bigger in Pendle for the last few years than the £32 million redevelopment of the former Bradley Mill, or North Lightning it is now known. This 400,000 square foot mill has been transformed into the head offices for Lancashire Adult Learning, Burnley Football Club in the Commune set, and the Leisure Box, which is now complemented by a new gym and an outdoor 4G football pitch. The base for the nationally recognised arts organisation in situ, and more recently 36 modern stylish apartments. These two projects alone are a big driver to increase our economic growth in Pendle. A key objective of this administration in our plan for Pendle. 
and helping with this growth one of my top priorities. So we have continued to provide funding for the Giving Hope for Growth Programme, funding 12 growth grants worth almost £50,000 and supporting 13 businesses with start-up grants worth nearly £10,000. We continue to support Growth Lancashire and which is chaired by our Pendle's own Tim Webber and with the Boost range of products has helped a number of Pendle businesses accelerate their growth plans. In conjunction with the Pendle Vision Board, the Council has launched its Made in Pendle campaign to showcase the good products and services that, we, that are made right here in Pendle and to show the companies across the country what a great place Pendle is for doing business. And business is central to the Corn Bid, which is now in the second year. As part of our plan for Pendle, we said we'd look to develop a bid in Bon and the feasibility work for that is now well underway. We said that we would launch a new drive to increase the supply of social housing across Pendle. Our joint venture with both Together Housing and Barnfield Investment Properties, which you all most build together, is at the forefront of this work. Recently at Harrison Drive in Corn, Pearl Together, uh, the Policy and Resources Committee granted planning permission, and Pearl Together will develop 79 eco-friendly, affordable two and three bedroom homes. These homes are expected to take advantage of the latest in green technology for their power and heating, and it is the first project that will be undertaken by this partnership. And at further Club Henry Nelson, around 498 <coughs> proposed properties for this site will also be affordable housing. And just to remind you colleagues, that in terms of Pearl, Pearl has just completed and sold all of the 36 new houses at Clitheroe Road in Brightfield. It's on site developing 32 new houses at Langroy and 21 new houses on Corn Carry Lane, both in Corn. We've demolished the former Corn Health Centre, which will be replaced by 12 apartments for the Peter Birth Whistle Trust and four retail units. These developments will build on the success of our other Pearl Joint Ventures, which is currently celebrating 10 years of regeneration. And as a council, as partners in leading housing development, we believe that we provide the confidence for other public and private developers to build much needed new housing in Pendle. For example, the Simmons are well on their way to developing out their site at Moss Lane in Corn. Seddons have completed their development at Saltersworth. McDermott are on site starting the development of around 100 units on Windermere Avenue in Corn. Together Housing have completed their 22 affordable housing developments at Warehouse Lane in Fall Ridge. And Calico have completed their 33 affordable housing developments on Priory Chase in Nelson. And we've recently received reserve matters planning applications for Barnsley Shed in Bon Oldswick and Truth Lane in Barrow Ford. We should see almost 400 new homes built. But whilst delivering new homes, uh, Mr Mayor, provides residents with the ability to climb the housing ladder, our plan for Pendle also focused to continue <coughs> the reduction in the number of empty properties. And I'm pleased to say that this has paid off with a number of long-term empty properties, now less than 3% of the housing stock. And we said that we would tackle the bottleneck in the delivery of disabled facilities grants. Again, Mr Mayor, it gives me pleasure to report that for the first time in a number of years, we will have committed most, if not all, of the funding allocation we've received this year by the 31st of March. We all know that great housing uh, offer can make for a great place, and that same principle applies to our town centres. We recognised some time ago with the, redevelopment of a, with the development of a 10 year vision for Bradford and Reedley and the development of a master plan for Nelson that some of our towns need help to redefine themselves, giving pressures on the high street from changing shopping habits, changing communities and changing needs. Thankfully, the government has now accepted that towns need investment. Our bid last year to the future high street front for Nelson Town Centre, which promised investment of up to £25 million, was successful. But it is disappointing that we're now being told we'll only get between £5 and £10 million, and we still have to bid for that. But we were successful for £25 that's been downgraded to between 5 and 10, and we still have to bid for it. I can tell the government now that we have the ambition as a council, we have the commitment, we just need the investment. And investment is the name of the game with the Nelson Town deal. Again, we're told there's up to £25 million available. I, for one, will be actively working with our new Nelson Town deal board to make sure that we've got a comprehensive investment plan 
to secure that and more funding so that we have a great deal with the government for Nelson. But Mr Mayor, I recognise that Pendle is polycentric and the other town centres are just as important to me, to Pendle's prosperity. Unfortunately, despite what I would consider to be high quality bids from both the town councils in Barn Oswick and Corn, their bids to the High Street Heritage Action Zones were not successful. Well, Mr Mayor, as you know, I'm known for my perseverance, and I will, I will ensure that where we can, we will work to secure more investment for both Corn and Van Oswick. But talking about investment, or the lack of it, we continue to face a significant challenge as a local authority. Despite that, we are keen to ensure that services and facilities are maintained and improved wherever possible. This approach has been at the heart of our budget partnership working with Town and Parish Council, Council, who once again have risen to the challenge of taking on more responsibility for services and facilities. And I want to thank and place on record my appreciation to those Town and Parish Councils that have worked constructively with us to protect local services and would encourage others to learn from those that have done this so successfully for the benefit of their residents in their areas. Our plan for Penwood, Mr Mayor, set out a range of other priority actions, which I'm pleased to report back on. We've reviewed the operation of litter bin and dog waste emptying, ensuring the services operating as efficiently as possible. We've recently succe successfully renegotiated a new deal to extend our contract with district enforcement <coughs> to deal with recalcitrant litterers. In the current year, the success of this arrangement has not only resulted in more fines for littering, but it's freed our own environmental crime officers to deal with even more cases of fly tipping. We, reserve, we reverse the unfair and unreasonable increase in cemetery charges pushed through by the last Conservative administration as part of their budget. We've also successfully lobbied for the Victoria Club culprit in Kirby to be, to be repaired. We've secured European funding for further flood alleviation measures in Kirby, which we hope will be more than matched by the Environment Agency. And we continue to lobby the government the Environment Agency and anybody else for that matter that's prepared to listen to us who can provide the funding necessary to provide the flood <coughs> alleviation measures required to manage flooding once and for all in the EAB. And at the turn of the year, Mr Mayor, we supported residents in the Essex Street area of Corn with their bid for a pocket park on the council surplus land on that street. And I wish those residents good luck with their bid. Mr Mayor, I believe we reversed the daft decision of the previous Conservative administration to dispose of the A Centre and number one Market Street, which we believe would have cost the council money. And because of our entrepreneurial instincts, <coughs> we've agreed a property investment strategy, of which I'll say more about later, backed up by £10 million of new borrowing. Also, in partnership with other Pennine local authorities, we've become a trailblazer for dealing with childhood obesity. We fully signed up to the campaign for promoting a healthy weight in our population, too as part of our drive to improve health outcomes in Pendle. In responding to the climate emergency declared by the Council a few months ago, we've set up the Climate Emergency Working Group under the chairmanship of Council Tony Greaves to focus our efforts in this area. I'll say more about this later, but one of their first actions resulted in the Summit for Schools on climate change, and I believe this was a resounding success. Our digital transformation of the council is advancing at an incredible rate with over 100 services and counting now available online 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, 365 days a year. And as part of our campaign to connect with residents, improving that two-way communication, myself and other leading councillors across the borough, along with senior council officers, have held a series of Let's Talk events to listen and act on their concerns. I could go on, Mr Mayor, but I'm mindful that I said that I would be brief, so let me turn to our financial settlement for the next financial year. The Government confirmed details of their financial support for local government in 2020-21, earlier this month. As I said earlier, whilst this represents a small uplifting, uplifting funding, it's for one year only, so we'll have to live with the sort of uncertainty that has plagued our financial planning over recent years for at least another year. <coughs> this settlement also includes another one year offer. Unlike previous years, next year's allocation of new college bonus will be paid for one year only, and the scheme looks likely to end. 
This is disappointing on a number of counts, but not least because the number of new homes built in Pendle last year was the highest for the last 15 years. So whilst we should have received around £740,000 of new bonus money over the next four years, it will only be a disappointing £184,000 in 2020-21. And I have to say that, whilst this going to new bonus bonus and the small uplift in, uplift in funding is welcome, it does nothing to replace the millions of pounds of funding this council has lost in the last decade as a result of the, the Conservative Government. In that context, the Comprehensive Spending Review, the Fair Funding Review and the Review of Business Rates Retention later this year all provide this Government with the ideal opportunity to address the imbalance in funding and to deliver on the funding promises they made prior to the general election. I mentioned earlier that this message, that the message from this new Government is about levelling up, about investing in the north of England and particularly the left behind, left behind places like Pendle. We need to make sure, Mr Mayor, that they are held to account for the promises they made, so in unleashing Britain's potential, we can unleash Pendle's potential to continue being a great place to live, learn, work, play and visit. <clears throat> Growth of the local economy remains at the heart of our plans. The economic success of Pendle as a place will not only reap financial rewards for this council, it will provide the opportunities for local businesses to grow and for local people to find employment in rewarding careers. It's in everybody's benefit to have a prosperous Pendle. But it is clear to me that Pendle alone cannot deliver economic growth and prosperity in the borough. It's with the strength of our partnerships, the network of organisations with which we collaborate and the inspirational leadership which our communities that have proven to be so effective in recent years and which we will need to deliver sustainable economic growth. As a council, like the rest of Lancashire's local authorities, we're committed to supporting the development of the Greater Lancashire Plan and to make an effective contribution to the Lancashire Local Industrial Life Strategy, both of which will present a case to the Government for investment in Lancashire and, more importantly, in Pendle. Combined with the development of a Pen and Lancashire Economic Prospectus and the imminent refresh of the Council's own Job and Growth Strategy, I'm confident that our investment plans for Pendle's strategic economic development objectives have been clearly made. And the last time I stood here, Mr Mayor, I talked about my hope that a Lancashire Combined Authority with a substantial devolution deal would be the best opportunity to secure the investment we need to achieve our strategic objectives. Indeed, I think we all agreed that devolution of funding and responsibilities closer to those that are affected by decisions is the right thing to do. Sadly, at that time, a number of councils did not support that view. But, with the prospect of the government's white paper on devolution in England this year, I'm pleased to say there's a renewed interest now in the combined authority amongst the Lancashire authorities. And I'm hopeful that once again, councils will start working together in the best interest of Lancashire. Once again, Mr Mayor, I must thank Dennis Mendoris for championing Pendle's interest so effectively, both in his position as a former member of the elect board, but also as a long-standing chairman of the Pendle Vision Board. I'd also like to place on record my appreciation to Amanda Melton for not only running one of the best further education colleges in the country here in our borough, but for continuing to represent Pendle's interest at the LED board. And with that in mind, I'm clear that the Lancashire LED is here to stay, and with a new chairman and chief executive providing the necessary leadership, I'm hopeful that we can build on the relationships that have seen a multi-million pound investment in projects like the junction improvements on the M65, the rejuvenated North Light in Bradfield and the expansion of the Longshore Industrial Estates delivered in Pendle. On that point, we all know that a crucial part of our growth story has to be better connectivity westwards to other parts of Lancashire and eastwards into Yorkshire. I don't wish to steal Council Greaves' thunder because he's got a motion on this later, but all I'll say is with the appointment of Pendle's Member of Parliament, Andrew Stevenson, as the Rail Minister, Surely now is our best opportunity to get the funding necessary to deliver the restatement to the call to skip to the rail line. To coin a phrase, Mr Mayor, no more dither and delay, give us our new railway. <laughs> <laughs> along, along the same lines, after consultations on the strategic road network, the major road network and transport for the north strategic plans, 
options for better connectivity between the M65 and Yorkshire are now again being considered by highways in Lynn. I'm of the view that this matter has been studied to death and the delivery of the Corner 56 religious bypass is now well overdue. Not only to support our economic growth ambitions, but to relieve the significant congestion currently experienced by those travelling through again. And again, to coin the phrase, let's get the bypass done. Turning now to our budget proposals for next year. Uh, first of all, I'd like to take this opportunity to thank the management team for bringing forward proposals early in the financial year to address the budget shortfall. It is right that we consider these matters carefully so that the impact of budget reductions on the residents of Pendle can be minimised wherever possible. In September, as a council, we agreed a package of savings totaling nearly 300,000, and these will be implemented in full. And Mr. Mayor, recognising the strength of our administration of the council, my group has been able to agree a budget with a Liberal Democrat group for next year, providing a sensible way forward for this council. We've considered further recommendations from the management team in some detail, and in particular, £50,000 for the Community Climate Action Schemes, which will be overseen by the Policy Resources Committee on advice from the Climate and Emergency Group. £15,000, Mr Mayor, this year and next year, to provide the seed funding towards the tree planting in partnership with the River Rivers Trust. The Council of Wick will elaborate more on that. We will add £50,000 to the Disabled Facilities Grants Budget to provide funding for the small number of grants which exceed the £30,000 limit. We will remove the administrative charges for replacing the wheelie bins which have proved so popular and again Councillor Wick will speak on that. And if we can persuade um, our friends at Lancashire County Council to contribute, we will provide a small amount of funding to provide free bus travel for under 25 year olds across Pendle. I'd like to thank the Leisure Services Working Group for the work they've undertaken on the strategic review of Leisure Services in Pendle. This clearly has been a worthwhile task, and it's clear to me, and my view remains, that Pendle Leisure Trust remains the best option for the delivery of leisure and sport services in Pendle. We will revisit the recommendations of the review in due course, but I do agree with, with the view that our facilities are ageing and in need of some urgent care and attention. A review of the condition survey is underway and I await recommendations from officers on this. But for now, we have no desire to reduce the level of service provision by the Federal Energy Trust, unlike the previous administration and the Conservatives. We will therefore not accept any of those proposals put forward and seek to do so. We believe there is a balance between sensible savings, with the Trust using some of its own reserves, and continuing to maintain services for the people of Pendle. We will therefore accept the proposals to reschedule loan repayments, reduce the cost of revocable, recoverable VAT, along with a small price increase. Mr Mayor, we will not increase cemetery charges. Whilst I acknowledge that the management team's objective for this service to become self-financing, we do not believe in burdening those people who have lost loved ones even more than they are burdened now. The charges will remain the same for the next 12 months. And likewise, we will not be making any reduction to the street cleaning and cleansing service this year. I think we all agree that this is a vital service and one which we should protect wherever possible. I commend the management team for developing options which will both save money and minimise the impact of the service. But I, for one, don't believe we've got to the point where this service needs to be changed. Mr Mayor, over recent years, our capital investment has been significantly constrained due to the lack of capital funding from the Conservative Government. In response to this, we've had to be creative to make the best use of our assets and the limited resources we've got to sustain